Thanks everybody for making it out today. Um, today we have Clifford Smith from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Greensboro. And uh, today he'll be talking about the non-crossing bond post set. So take this uh, away. And uh, in case this does make it to the internet, my name is Smythe, but that's okay. Oh, I'm so uh, sorry. I was, I was not <laughs> no, sure. No, 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 no. It's, uh, if you're from Ireland, I think you're supposed to say Smith. We just like think ourselves are, I guess my grandfather thought he was fancy or something and was going to call himself Smythe. So <laughs> thank you for letting me know. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Uh, so um, yeah, we're going to, I'm going to talk to you today about the non crossing bond post set. Uh, this is uh, joint work with uh, Joshua Hallam. Uh, myself and Matt Farmer. Uh, it was begun when uh, Josh was a postdoc at Wake Forest University uh, nearby where uh, UNCG and Matt was his master's student. Now Matt is a PhD student of mine at UNCG. And uh, Joshua is uh, tenure track at Loyola Marymount University in uh, California. All right, so uh, we're gonna start our uh, story with um, four partially ordered sets, uh, three of them lattices. Uh, the first lattice that we're gonna talk about is the partition lattice. That's uh, capital Pi N. So uh, you collect all the set partitions of the standard N element set one through N. And you put a partial order on this by uh, setting pi one to be a uh, less than or equal to pi two if uh, every part in pi one is a subset of part in pi, a part of pi two. So another way to think of this is you obtain pi two from joining parts in pi one until you reach pi two. So the, this partial order turns out to be a lattice if you, uh, you can form a meet of two partitions. Uh, the smallest partition that is less than or equal to pi one and pi two, and that turns out to be just a kind of shattering of pi one and pi two. You take a part from pi one and a part from pi two, and if they're non-empty, you take their intersection. And these are the parts of the meet. And uh, the join is just, the meat of the elements uh, that lie above both pi one and pi two. Uh, here we see an example of pi four. Uh, there's the partition where all the elements are in singleton classes. Uh, there's the next level of the lattice where I've taken two elements and joined them together to form a part one, two or a part one, three. Uh, at the next level, uh, you can see that I've joined one, two, and three to make one, two, three. And so we have partitions with two parts. Uh, there's two different types, one with uh, three element set and one element set. And then there's some other ones with uh, two element subsets. And then at the top is the, uh, the maximal element of the uh, lattice, uh, the partition of just one part, one, two, three, four. So the partition lattice is ranked. Uh, the rank is the n minus one number minus the number of parts of pi. And this is because uh, the covering relations are obtained by taking exactly two parts in one partition and joining them. And uh, that gives you the element that covers, uh, an element that covers that partition. And so, um, you know, there's in n minus one steps uh, of these joins, you're, you're at the top of the lattice and uh, all the chains uh, between any two elements, all the maximal chains between any two elements are the same length. Uh, you just join um, two parts together at a time until you reach uh, the top element. So here we see the same lattice pi four with the uh, levels, uh, the ranks. So you'll notice that it's exactly n, mi n minus one minus the number of components. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about the characteristic polynomial of uh, these posets and lattices. So there's the Mobius function, which is defined to be one for the zero element. And then you define, uh, the Mobius function of every other element so that all the intervals 
uh, if you look at any X and you look at all the uh, Ys in the interval between zero and X, the Mobius values for those elements should sum to zero. So another way to put it is that mu of X is negative the sum of the Mobius values of all the uh, elements strictly less than X. So if uh, P happens to be a ranked post set as many of our post sets will be, uh, you can form the characteristic polynomial uh, where you sum up over all the elements, the Mobius value of the elements uh, weighted with the power of T and the power of T rather than being the rank of the element is the rank of the post set minus the rank of the element. So uh, for example, here is our pi four the Mobius value of the zero element is always given one. Here's an interval. The Mobius values have to sum to zero. So this one has to be a negative one. Uh, let's see. Uh, so this one has to be negative one. This one has to be negative one. Here is another element. It's above these two. So there's an interval. The Mobius values have to sum up to one. So this Mobius value is a one. Whereas if you look at this one, it's got three elements below it and this one. And so on this interval, the Mobius values have to sum to zero. So you get one minus one, minus one, minus one. And then this one has to be two and so on. And the characteristic polynomial is just to collect the sum of the Mobius values uh, for each rank. Um, so uh, it's run a little bit backwards. So um, T cubed gets the Mobius values at this rank. T squared gets the Mobius values summed at this rank. So that's a negative six. Uh, T gets the Mobius values summed at this rank. And so that's two plus two plus two plus three. And that gets you 11. And then there's one Mobius value at the top and that's the constant coefficient. And that's a Mobius value of negative six. Okay. The non-crossing partition lattice uh, is a restriction of the partition lattice where uh, we forbid parts to cross. So that means uh, you can't have members of one part, A and A prime, uh, interleave with members of another part, B and B prime. So you can't have parts that have elements that do this uh, with one another. And so a partition is called uh, non-crossing if no two parts of its, no two of its parts cross. And so we're gonna denote that with NCN. And it's a sub lattice of pi n, it's closed under taking meets being non-crossing is, that is. So it's definitely going to be a sub lattice. And uh, it's going to be ranked uh, as it's a lattice, uh, um, sorry, it's ranked. And uh, here we see the characteristic uh, polynomial of it. And there's not a whole lot of difference between NC4 and PI4. Uh, there's really only one partition that you have to throw out. You have to throw out one, three, two, four, uh, the partition with parts one, three, and two, four, because they interleave. All, they cross one another. Uh, all the other partitions are okay. So that changes uh, Mobius values a little bit because um, it's such a small lattice. Uh, this element of course disappears and its Mobius value of one disappears with it. So this negative six gets reduced to a negative five. Uh, and so in distinction, the coefficients, instead of being one minus six, 11 minus six, they're one minus six, 10 minus five. Uh, the bond lattice of a graph is, uh, Another lattice, it's based on the partitions, uh, the partition lattice, uh, but you only take certain partitions. Uh, you take those set partitions whose parts induce connected components in your graph. All right, so it's all the set partitions, but you only take parts that induce connected components in your graph. 
another way to look at it is uh, as a, a set of subgraphs of G, uh, subgraphs that span and whose components are induced. Uh, there's just a one-to-one -one correspondence between these. And uh, if you look at it in terms of graphs, um, one bond is less than or equal to another if the graphs are contained. And so the meat of two bonds is just the intersection of the two graphs. Here, uh, this is a ranked uh, poset. And um, you uh, can see its rank function there. Uh, just to remind you, here is the characteristic polynomial for pi four uh, and I'm sorry, this should be an NC. Uh, yeah, this should be right. So if it's pi four and if it's if the graph is K four, there's no restriction, right? Um, uh, any part that's a subset of KN is gonna induce uh, a connected component because all the edges are there. Sorry, that's the point I wanted to make with that slide. So uh, pick any partition, one, four is one part, two, three is another part. Those parts will induce connected components because all the edges are there. Uh, the story gets interesting if you have uh, a graph that's not the complete graph. For instance, this uh, twisted four cycle. Um, here we see, um, the partition one, four, two, three has to be thrown out. Look at this part, one, four, it doesn't induce a connected subgraph. So this thing gets tossed. Uh, these get tossed for the same reason. One, four uh, does not induce a connected subgraph and neither does two, three. Uh, but that turns out to be all of them. And so some Mobius values disappear and the Mobius values adjust uh, to give you a characteristic polynomial uh, that you see here. All right. And uh, here's another example where a lot more things get thrown out. Uh, so that's the uh, graph underlying it and uh, very little survives of the original Pi 4. So uh, what we did or what Josh's idea was to uh, kind of complete the picture. You've got the uh, partition lattice. You've got the non-crossing partition lattice behind it. Then you can introduce graphs and you've got the bond lattice of a graph. How about the non-crossing bond? Well, I guess it turns out to not be a lattice, but it's the non-crossing bond post set. So it's the room, it's the missing fourth corner of the, uh, the quadrilateral. So uh, let's start again with a graph on the vertices uh, one through N. Uh, again, the non, the members of the non-crossing uh, bond post set are those uh, non-crossing set partitions. Um, who's uh, uh, induce uh, connected components. And uh, we furthermore uh, require that these components don't cross one another. So if you look at it from the graph perspective, you're looking at subgraphs such that the components of H are induced and don't cross. Uh, the non-crossing post set is not uh, necessarily the non-crossing bond post set is not necessarily a lattice and might not even be ranked, but uh, the non-crossing uh, bond post set on K4 again is the same thing as uh, the non-cross, uh, the uh, bond post set. Uh, that doesn't offer restrictions, but here's an example where things are different. Uh, here's pi four and the characteristic polynomial and you'll see that one, three, two, four, while it's a element of the bond post set, it's uh, actually a crossing bond. Its components cross one another. Now, 
we are fixing a cyclic ordering of the vertices. So all of this crossing is with respect to a cyclic ordering of the vertices. So you see how the graphs are, are uh, arranged like this. So um, pi four is there and NC four just has that one thing thrown out and the two flow it thrown out and the uh, Mobius function and characteristic polynomial adjust. So the non-crossing bond post set um, might not be a lattice. Uh, here's an example. Um, if you just look at the graph that just consists of the edge one four, so that's one part that contains one four and the rest are singletons. And you look at the other bond three five that just consists of the edge three five and all other points are singletons. These are bonds in the non-crossing post set, there's no crossings. And uh, one four un uh, join three five should be the unique minimal subgraph that contains both one four and three five. Uh, the problem is here is a minimal bond that contains one four and three five but you can go around the other edge of the cycle and get another minimal bond containing one, four and three, five. And um, they're, not, uh, they're not comparable. Uh, and so uh, the join of these two elements does not exist in the non-crossing bond poset. So, uh, early on, we were able to characterize when the non-crossing bond post set is a lattice. And uh, in some sense, the obstruction, the potential obstruction that I just showed you on the last slide is the only obstruction. If you have very simple bonds, just an edge E and just an edge F and they cross, if the join of those two bonds always exists for crossing edges E and F, then NC, uh, the non-crossing bond post set is a lattice. And <clears throat> uh, another way to look at that is that um, for all crossing E and F, uh, there's gotta be a join. And it turns out the join is uh, the unique minimal induced connected subgraph containing E and F. So this uh, join of ENF, the unique minimal component MEF um, is uh, what we're gonna call it. Um, sorry. Right, so if uh, G has two components that cross, you can take an edge from one and an edge from other that will cross and this unique minimal induced connected subgraph won't exist. There'll be no way to get a connected subgraph going from one component to another to both contain E and F. So we're just gonna assume that G has no crossing components from now on so that at least our uh, non-crossing bond post set will have a, a maximal element, the, the graph G itself. So um, we were able to characterize uh, when the non-crossing bond set uh, post set was ranked uh, when it has no crossing components. Uh, the non-crossing bond post set is going to be ranked if and only if, well, unsurprisingly, if you take one bond and it's covered by another, um, you get from one to the other by joining two components of H. Um, there's a proof here and I think I'll just skip it. Um, here's an example where um, the non-crossing bond post-it is uh, not ranked. Um, so um, this is actually a cover relation. Uh, H is uh, covered by G, but uh, you can clearly see you did not uh, join two components to get from H to G. And uh, the reason is uh, if you just try joining components, um, 
you um, just um, you just can't do it. Uh, let's say I try to join uh, two six with uh, three five. Um, well, there's no edges connecting them. So if I try to make a part out of two six three five, it's not a connected component. So I can't do that. If I try to join uh, one and uh, if I try to join one and three five, I can do that because there's an edge uh, connecting one five and that'll give me a connected component, but then that edge is going to cross this component. So you can just go through um, all, the, um, all the possibilities and uh, this, um, there's just no way to uh, go directly uh, by joining two components. You have to join them all at once. So you have to jump ranks. So I want to talk about uh, an interesting combinatorial formula for the characteristic polynomial of the bond um, lattice. Um, because uh, we're going to be trying to repurpose that combinatorial formula to get a combinatorial formula for the characteristic polynomial of the non-crossing bond post set. So we're going to start with the combinatorial formula for the uh, bond lattice first. So we're going to put a total order on the edges in G. And we'll say uh, a non-broken circuit with respect to this order is a spanning forest such that if E is not an edge in the forest and well, when you add the edge, you'll create a unique cycle, uh, a path in the forest together with, uh, I'm sorry, if you join an edge that's, uh, that's within a component of the forest, you'll create a new um, a, um, cycle. Uh, what you don't want is you don't want this uh, E to be the minimal element of that cycle with respect to that partialing order. So um, I guess you could say a broken cycle is uh, you take a cycle and you remove its smallest element. So that's what you would consider a broken cycle. So uh, a non-broken circuit is something that is maximal and doesn't have a broken, doesn't have a broken cycle in it. Uh, so for instance, it's going to be a forest, right? Uh, if it has a cycle in it, then it has a broken cycle in it. Just remove the smallest weight uh, edge. So let's let NBCK count the number of K edge non-broken circuits. So the idea is every time you add an edge, if you create a cycle, um, there'll be an edge less than that on the cycle. So let's do some counts. Uh, we're gonna put one, two, less than one, three, less than two, four, less than three, four as our total order. Uh, how many K edge forests are there? There's just one, one forest with no edges. How many forests are there with one edge? Uh, there's four of them. Um, and uh, I don't have to worry about uh, creating any uh, broken cycles because there's no cycles to create. Um, and uh, the two edge uh, non-broken circuits, there are six of them. There's the two edge forests. Now we can get into trouble if we have a uh, non-broken circuit of three edges. Um, there's one spanning forest of three edges uh, that we have to throw out. We have to throw out this one because here's an edge that I could add and it's going to be the minimal element on its cycle because one, two just happens to be the minimal element overall. And uh, these turn out to be exactly the uh, coefficients of the uh, characteristic polynomial of the partition lattice uh, in this reverse order um, where 
the uh, number of edges and the uh, degree of T add to three. So uh, the relationship uh, that this comes from is, uh, the reason this uh, comes about is uh, Whitney's theorem of um, about uh, the chromatic polynomial. So the chromatic polynomial of a graph is uh, the polynomial that uh, such that when you plug in T, you get the number of proper T colorings of G. Uh, so if Whitney's theorem was that if uh, G is any graph on n vertices and you have any total ordering on the edge set whatsoever, then the number of non-broken circuits of K edges is invariant with respect to the order. You can pick any order and you'll still get the same number of non-broken circuits on K edges. And the characteristic polynomial has as its coefficients these uh, non-broken circuit counts in uh, reverse order. Okay. So uh, with a little bit of argument, we can use this to uh, get a uh, non-broken circuit formula for the characteristic uh, polynomial of the uh, partition lattice. Um, first of all, let's remember what the uh, characteristic polynomial is. You uh, look over all um, uh, the bond lattice, excuse me. Uh, you look at over all bonds, you take the mu of uh, the bond and then the appropriate uh, T polynomial with it. I'm grouping them according to the degree of T that they get. Uh, right here, I'm substituting in the actual ranks of the uh, bond lattices. It's n minus the number of connected components of G. Moving on to the next page, it's uh, a not hard argument to show that the characteristic polynomial, the chromatic polynomial, and the characteristic polynomial of the bond post set are related in this way. And then it's just a, a straight substitution and um, you get um, this uh, formula for the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of the uh, bond post, uh, the bond lattice. So there we go. Uh, a formula for the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of the bond lattice in terms of non-broken circuits. And there they are, the one minus four, six minus three that we saw from the previous example or on the previous page. For the same graph, uh, if you look at the non-crossing bond poset, the characteristic polynomial for that is uh, this one, t cubed minus four t squared plus five t minus two. And what we saw in many examples was the phenomenon that uh, the absolute value of the coefficient for the non-crossing bond poset was just less than or equal to the absolute value of the same coefficient for the bond poset characteristic polynomial. So that got us thinking that maybe uh, since there was a combinatorial count for the coefficients of the uh, bond poset polynomial, maybe there would also be a combinatorial count for the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of the non-crossing bond poset. And uh, in fact, that's what we found. Uh, if we slightly modified or slightly uh, generalized the notion of a non-broken circuit uh, to a non-crossing non-broken circuit. So the non-crossing non-broken circuits with K edges are the non-broken circuits with respect to 
the total order on the edges that also have non-crossing edges, that also have no crossing edges. Okay. And it turned out in many cases that these were precisely the counts that you needed to get you the polynomial, uh, the coefficients of the uh, characteristic polynomial for the uh, non-crossing bond post set. So uh, for example, um, six goes down to five. Look at that T coefficient. That corresponds to non-crossing, uh, that corresponds to broken uh, circuits, non-broken circuits of two edges. And there are six two edge forests that are non-broken circuits and one of them is crossing and has crossing edges. So we got to throw that out. So the six goes down to a five, exactly what it should be. Uh, for the uh, constant coefficient, the three is supposed to go down to the two. Now, what was the three? It was the three edge non-broken non -broken circuits um, so not including this one, this is non-broken. This is not a non-broken circuit because of this edge. But there's one more that we have to throw out this one because it's got crossing edges in it. So uh, the three goes down to a two as it should. And we get uh, the polynomial. So uh, this is what we found, uh, the characteristic polynomial for the non-crossing bond post set uh, can in some cases uh, be given as a formula where the coefficients are combinatorial counts of objects, specifically non-broken circuits that are also non-crossing, uh, but only in certain circumstances. Um, or the ones that we found. Uh, there's, there's examples where we couldn't make this work, but uh, we were able to make this work if the non-crossing bond post set was the lattice and had what we called a NC-NBC ordering or a non-crossing non-broken set ordering, or if uh, G was a perfectly labeled graph. I'll say a little bit about what both of those things mean. So in particular, you know, unlike the situation with Whitney's theorem, uh, the number of non-broken circuits uh, with K edges did not depend on the total ordering you put on the edges. Unfortunately, uh, when you're looking at non-crossing non-broken circuits, uh, the counts do depend on the ordering. So, uh, which is part of the reason that you can't have a universal statement here. But uh, if you happen to have an NC-NBC ordering, so what is that? Uh, you look at the join of E and F, uh, any two crossing edges, the minimal connected induced subgraph containing edges E and F. If you require that that always have an edge G less than E and F in your ordering, then in fact, uh, you do get these uh, combinatorial counts. And in case that seems um, obscure, uh, I, will pref I will try to make it sound a little better in that uh, if you're given a graph, we have a, a very efficient algorithm that will either find the ordering that will make this a true theorem or will prove that such an ordering can't exist. So at least, you know, it's not like it's a, a collection of graphs that we have no idea about uh, that satisfy this theorem. We know if you're given a graph, we can tell you if it'll satisfy this theorem. Uh, the other situation in which we have this theorem is if um, G is perfectly labeled. So that's uh, when you can put an ordering on the edges of the, on the uh, vertices of the graph and uh, all the, back neighborhoods of a vertex uh, form a cleats. So uh, there are some more results in the paper that we wrote uh, that got uh, published in um, 
at the Electronic Journal of Combinatorics. Um, we examined uh, a number of families of graphs and uh, tabulated some properties that the non-crossing bond POSET had. Uh, some of the properties we um, considered were ones that have these uh, joins, uh, ones that have this NC NBC ordering, uh, ones that are too connected or perfectly labeled, and uh, the non-crossing bond poset uh, properties uh, we examined were the property that it was graded or lattice or had this combinatorial theorem for the coefficients of the characteristic of the characteristic polynomial. We also considered uh, shellability of the chain complex. And so um, the, uh, as we mentioned, uh, you have this combinatorial um, interpretation uh, when you have an NBC ordering. Uh, it turns out you'll always have this uh, particular ordering when the graphs are too connected. So um, if the graph is too connected, you also have that combinatorial theorem. So it's, it's not a, a non-negligible uh, class of graphs uh, for which you have this combinatorial theorem. Two connected ones will work. Uh, there are some deletion contraction results known for the chromatic polynomial and and hence for the characteristic polynomial of the bond lattice. Um, and we're able to produce um, some deletion contraction results for the non-crossing bond poset, although they're not, uh, they're not really that pretty. Uh, further directions that we were working on at the time that we were looking at this were um, trying to guarantee trying to find conditions under which the non-crossing bond post set is ranked. Um, this is, would be nice to know that at least uh, so that we would know what are the situations in which we can even discuss um, uh, characteristic polynomials. Uh, but um, a good criteria for this eluded us. Um, another thing we noticed was that if you have a perfectly labeled graph, the coefficients of the non-crossing non bond poset uh, appear to be log concave in every example that we've tried. Um, it's a major recent theorem that the coefficients of the uh, bond lattice um, are log concave. So it might be interesting to at least show that the coefficients of the non-crossing bond poset uh, characteristic polynomial are log concave. Uh, but we didn't, uh, we didn't do a whole lot on that. It seemed like a hard problem as well. All right, well, I think that's what I had to say about it. So thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you, Clifford. Um, if everybody could uh, thank our thank speaker you. in some way. Thank you. And uh, are there any questions for Clifford? I say, I'm not sure if it's a question or a thought, but um, this, yeah, this, the, the result of, uh, what is it, Adepresito and... Uh, oh, right, right, yeah, right. And, uh, and cats is so hard, right? That this, this, yeah, 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 exactly. You, you can tell why we didn't want to spend a lot of time yeah. on, uh, on, uh, on, but on the other hand, it's, on the other hand, it's perfectly labeled. So, you know, maybe, you know, so uh, maybe uh, it's not that hard, but right. Yeah, I mean. So yeah. I was just thinking, you know, there's this closely related conjecture due to I think the unimodal version was due to Rota, and then the log concave version was due to Welsh. That the Sterling numbers of the second kind are log right. concave. I believe so. Um, yeah. And I wonder if you have you looked at those rank sizes um, in this case for. The, for um, no, uh, no, we did not actually. Um, that's that is interesting. Um, yeah. 
Well, uh, it's something to add to further it, directions. It might be even harder, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Exactly. That was always my favorite of the two questions. Yeah, no. Yeah, they're great questions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Any other questions for Clifford? Well, there was stuff in the chat. I don't know, maybe, uh... <coughs> ah, just thank yous. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, <coughs> I'd like, uh, like to invite everyone to thank uh, thank our speaker again and uh, you know thank you for a very wonderful talk <laughs> um, I actually you know I wasn't sure if I should ask because I don't know that this is a well-formed question oh yeah sure so maybe maybe this was a little bit delayed but there was one slide where you had you were talking about this condition for um, for uh, the non-crossing foset to not be a lattice or to be a lattice and you know you have this condition right that's right yeah so every every pair of edges there, there should there has to exist a unique way to find an induced subgraph that's yeah uh, right yeah I, yeah I, and, and they and they look uh they look uh they look very interesting actually they you have a, a crossing edge you have a crossing edge and then uh you the the MEFs those those joins of of, of ENF they're like uh, path there's ENF um, and there might be there might be just one edge okay so there's a path between them right uh, there's a path between them and then the very last vertex of the path might connect to one endpoint of E or both mm -hmm. so it's like uh, either like a like it just uh, the path ends in E, or it's like a little dumbbell at the end, and the same thing with F. So it's like a dumbbell graph, and uh, and so you can actually test for this pretty easily. Looking for such structures is is not hard. I mean, you can you can write a terribly inefficient algorithm to do this. In in other words, um, there's there's probably a better way to do it, but yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I was trying to think of. <clears throat> what that might look like and, and you just you sort of answered my question with that yeah no that's exactly so. what they look like actually <laughs> so, so you. um you know that's why uh it's um so that's why that one example um didn't work um uh let's see where was it uh oh my gosh Oh, there, that's it. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's, there's kind of like another way to go around. Yeah, I think there's the, there's like a minimal, there's like a minimal in connected subgraph, but you can sort of go around the cycle in two ways. And uh, that's, that, that's the problem. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> okay, so um, uh, <laughs> thanks again, Cliff. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I, thanks everyone for coming out uh, for our discrete seminar this week. And uh, I think, uh, go ahead and end and, and there and, and I'll see everybody next week. <laughs> okay. See ya, thanks.